C'est une reproduction d'un bateau de canal de 1862. You want one of these or you feel comfortable enough? Thank you. Yeah, that will work, won't it? Bonjour. Bienvenue à bord. And that's the flashing their smile. My dad actually was like, you're very cool. Merci beaucoup. A quick meeting to organize for the day. Um, I thought yesterday went very well. Uh, we had about 250 people on the boat. It's our first time with the blending of the French and the English, and uh, I, I think it uh, worked fairly well. I am anticipating, uh, despite the weather, we may see more people today. And that, of course, is because of our famous debut on Quebec television. We also. Uh, there, that newspaper article. Well, anyway, there it is. It's over there. We have the newspaper article. Uh, people are beginning to know we exist, um, so we may have quite a few visitors. I printed off this image this morning, provided to us by the Historical Society over the winter. Uh, it's just perfect. That's this dock. That is yeah. this dock, sailing canal boats on this dock. Uh, so you can't drive the point home any better than, than this image right here. So. Uh, uh, we'll leave this down below deck. Don't get it in the rain. It's uh, not waterproof. This is where you put all the stuff. This is the train, right? Uh, and uh, it, it's very important for people to understand that. Uh, we've opened it up for people to walk through, but uh, and we have examples of cargo, but they would have filled this boat with whatever they were carrying. If we filled the boat with stones, more stones, we would sink down into the water. Uh, but the canals, the, the depth, is very restricted, and so this was the best shape to put the most amount of stuff to make the most money. That was what it was all about. If now, if all their children were small, they would have to have a hired man because it would take about three people to handle the boat. But once the children started growing up, the oldest boys would take over from the hired man. And when we say oldest boys, we're talking maybe twelve. Otherwise, we have Mama et Papa ici, et tous les enfants ici. So it's a very close family, to say the least. Right now, does it work or not? It does work. There's a man who uh, lives on the boat uh, en hiver as a guardian, and he uses that for his heat. And cooking. Cooking. Okay, so you have somebody in the winter here? Yes. Really? Yes. And 
These are here. This is would be unique to a boat. It, and they're called in, in English fiddles. Uh, I don't know what they would be called in French. Fiddle like the oh, <laughs> And the point is if the boat heals, if the boat goes like this, the pots stay on the stone. Mm -hmm. You tied them right there because that keeps them from falling overboard. Okay, okay. So because you see the rails here. If it's working, I want three. <laughs> Says he, dear James, to murder me were a foolish thing to do, for don't you see that you can't cook me? Well, I can and will cook you. <laughs> so he boils the water and takes the salt, and the pepper and portions true, which he never forgot, and chops, and some chopped shallot, <laughs> and some sage and parsley too. Come here, says he, with a proper pride, which his smiling features tell. Will soothing be if I let you see how extremely nice you'll smell. <laughs> and he stirred it round and round and round, and he sniffed at the foaming froth, when I ups with his heels and smothers his squeals in the scum of the boiling broth. <laughs> <laughs> and I eat that cook a week or less, and as I eating be, the last of his chops, why I almost drops, for Wessel in sight I see. And I never grin and I never smile, and I never laugh nor play, but I sit and croak in a single joke I have, which is to say, Oh, I am a cook and a captain bold, and the mate of the Nancy Brig, and a bosun tight, and a midship might, and the crew of the captain's gift. <laughs> Yeah, these pans aren't waterproof. <laughs>